new GPS aerial for the fast track because the other one has got condensation in it and knackered. It's not even two years old and it's £900 for a new one. So I hope they'll do something on the warranty because it's designed to live outside. Obviously, the tracks get part of the barn every, every night anyway. So it shouldn't really get condensation in it and knacker itself, should it? This is what it is. A little blob. Don't even think there's any electronics inside it. It's just just an aerial, really. So you'd wonder where the nine hundred pound is in that. Looks like the cat's had enough. I've just caught it with his head in the oven. Maze update. Field three is now coming into flower. I've got a bunch of flowers for the table at the farmhouse that's getting rented out. Field two, totally, totally in bloom. Field one, still in bloom, so pretty good. It might get to the point where we've got three fields in bloom, looking great, so that's like 30 acres, and then the fourth one's a bit off. But yeah, still looks great. This has got some direct grilled oilseed rape in this field. So <clears throat> some of them here, a bit slug chewed, a bit pigeon chewed maybe. Quite a bit of weed. It's uh, amazing, really, how much it's chewed by slugs. And then, if we go this way, it's got a bit of brome and a bit of grass weeds growing in it as well. There is a crop there, but it's a lot harder to see. But when we get over to where we've we worked the ground a little bit first with the sumo, it's, it's sort of like a tail of two fields. So, over here, there are a lot more the plants, are a lot more developed, probably a bit more even a germination as well. Um, they're definitely a lot bigger but that's still okay but it just shows you just by moving a bit of soil mineralizing a bit of n they just get away that little bit quicker you've also got black soil which warms up quicker as well so that probably helps things a bit but you can see the distinct lines in here but then you go to the side obviously more, there's more weed in it and it, it's a lot harder to see the lines which could be a good thing because it could keep the pigeons off it it is there but it's just amazing the difference in the slug pressure to be honest between where it's worked and where it's not it's hard at all to see any slugs on that but they're obviously on the surface on this one feeding anyway it'd be interesting to see throughout the year how it develops this crop and whether when we come to combining there's a difference in yield we're going to go through anyway knock these grass weeds out now a little bit of volunteer barley and mainly brome so we'll knock that out with falcon I really could do though with a new sprayer because new sprayer's got GPS so I can put the tram lines in with GPS. I think Adam did tram line this field but I want to be able to put them in with the sprayer and then the sprayer know exactly where they are every time and then it'll make it a lot easier then for when editing video spraying because the sprayer will just drive itself down the tram lines so you'll get better video content. One of them bonuses of sponsoring abatement on YouTube. Just over here as well it's better soil, a lot bigger plants. Really, really getting away. Just thinking about the slug thing, I think what's happening now is the slugs are feeding off things on the surface where it's not been disturbed. So they're having to go with the, the rate when it's coming up. But when the ground's mixed up and disturbed, they're feeding off the straw residue and different things. And maybe the shoots of seeds and things that we've buried under the top surface. So that's why they're not much of a threat on the oil seed rape. So just here where it's really had a good working, you can see just oil seed rape growing. It does look good. Obviously though, working that ground comes at a cost and it also makes it soft and fluffy, which means when we travel on it, we'll compact it and then we've got to correct it and you just get stuck on this sort of treadmill of constantly correcting soil and getting the structure back into it. Just been pulling a few weeds out the gravel. Looks good though. They just keep popping up. I need to spray it, I think. Pretty much ready to go now. Just wash the bin out, I can go back inside. Sorted out the piece of wood that fell over over there. Andrew's just cut the hedge. I've just put a flag over a manhole cover that was damaged. A couple of people were saying yesterday about me saying about people with different languages. Well, you must have seen the videos last year. We basically had six lads from Moldova, basically refurbed the whole house. But out of them six lads, only two of them spoke English. The other four didn't speak a word of it. And unfortunately, the two that spoke the most English went home for two weeks when we were finishing the kitchen off and the plumber was doing all the plumbing and they fitted the dishwasher and they didn't understand each other so that is why the dishwasher wasn't plumbed in correctly it's got nothing to do with the fact they spoke a different language it's the fact they didn't understand what the plumber was trying to tell them anyway that was that so it's all ready to go now and uh, hopefully we'll get plenty of bookings and it'll start earning its keep because it's cost me a fortune over the last sort of 18 months doing it up so so where have you come from Nutsford, Nutsford yeah and 
Cheshire crew. It's great. I thought you were Middlewich. I'm in the moment, Dad lives in Middlewich. Oh, right. <laughs> anyway, Andrew's going to show him around because I'm going up to the other farm. I think I might have found where this has come from. It's obviously got polished in the dryer, but I think it might be off the combine. From the floor, it looked like something had snapped off here, but if you look, it's just tape. So I thought that had come off there. But it's not. I love Kate's on there. We've got a bit of blue sky, so we're just going to go and try cutting some wheat. So I'm just going to roll this sheet back, but I'm just going to disconnect it this side. And it's got it's got these handles on it. They need that needs oil and I think. But it's got a bar in, so you can lift them up. But the hook kind of like flops backwards. It's like it's like floppy on the end somehow. See, so when you want to like lift it up, it just falls backwards. It's not so bad for putting it onto there. You can kind of get it. But when you're trying to hook it on that, that D-link up there, it's a right awkward thing to do. So, what we could do with changing that. Yeah, you can tighten that up Thread that in the way, out, out, out the way. There you go, so it doesn't catch the wheel. And uh, let's undo the other ones. Oh, that was, I didn't put that one on anyway. Yeah, just undo this one now. And then undo the bungee cord. Wherever it is. There you go, take that off there. That's what you pull it over with when you need to shut it. Some of them have a retractable dog lead, but that's just got that. Got the handle plugged in the back now, so I'll roll it up. Try to call it an easy sheet. Just put the handle back now, it just stows away on the side of the chassis there. I tip the trailer slightly because it makes it a bit easier to see what you're doing because when you've got a bit of angle you can see where you're threading this handle into the back when you've got it, that, that angle like that just going try cutting some corn now see how wet it is in a time lapse of the field cutting this field of wheat now it's not too bad in places but we patched up some spring in some of the wet patches and then the headlands are very poor. Well, this is the one that they made a bit of a mess digging spuds on two years ago. And it's just not recovered. So anyway, we're going to cut this while it's a bit damp at the moment because then at least we've not got too much wet grain to handle. And then we're going to go over the hedge to... Hopefully a bit dry when we get there. Yeah, this bit here is pretty good and then this kind of flooded so we patched it up with spring so the spring's really thin because it was still quite wet after it had been sown but at least the inputs we put on it the fertilizer and different things have been soaked up and it's got some roots in it now to make it dry up a bit get a bit of structure and then obviously we are harvesting a little bit of wheat off this spring crop not a lot to be honest you know probably a ton to the acre but or two and a half tons to the hectare it's better than having a bird patch and getting nothing off it Got to get them on video but some maze visitors have come to see the combine working so i think they might be staying at the maze tonight in the motorhome another one ticked off it's a little bit wet first load back was 30 percent but i think that was because it was off the head of the spring wheat andrew's just getting ahead of trailer from over there he's left his trailer there now he's going to get me through that gap there over the famous bridge where i back the combine off the other last year and smashed the chopper I don't know what date it was, but you can look back for the videos. I'm sure someone who's got a bit more time on their hands and isn't driving a combine would look back and see what date it was last year and what the, what the number of the video is of when I smashed the chopper off the back of the combine in that ditch. If you'd be kind enough to put it in the comments so that everyone can then look in the comments to see what it is and then it saves me having to troll back while I'm trying to drive. So I don't want to fall in that ditch. Top tip if you've got a Convio header, once you've finished and you want to take it off, Make sure that angle is set to ten plus 10 to make it easy to get on the header trailer. And then also, if you hold that button down, it parks the reel and the header where it needs to be. And it takes the pressure out of the rams underneath so it doesn't like want to spring off the header trailer. Because if you don't do that, it has pressure in the rams. And who's that guy that shot his wife in, in South, South Africa, I've forgotten his name, that Olympic runner, anyway, it's got, it, it can act like his leg and flick the header, header off the back of the header trailer. 
so I always park it. And also as well, belt settings. Uh, can I see them now? Mm, where are we now? Uh, I can't see them because the machine's not running. But anyway, I always have the front belt running faster than the outside ones. So when it comes in, I get a nice flat layer going through the threshing mechanism. I don't have it too bunched up, otherwise it creates problems. Because I know James was having trouble with this, and it's because he thought he had to have the middle slower than the outside. Just driving over this bridge now. So this, these brambles there, it's hard to see because the sun glare is the end of a ditch. Anyway, I backed into it, not realizing that the ditch was a little bit longer than I thought last year, a foot, a foot longer, and I dropped the back wheel of the combine into the ditch and smashed the chopper. So anyway, we just pull into this field of wheat now, which looks stunning. This field was always a bit of a problem field, but I grew some summer barley on it and it's totally, we never harvested the summer barley, it was left, but it acted like a cover crop and it's totally transformed the field ever since. So that was a result. Better come in now. I hate having to drive on it. But normally you get a burr patch in a gateway, but this one's wall to wall wheat, which is nice. There it comes. And when he gets level, he's got to drive with the crop as well, which is slightly annoying. Give him the beat. And we'll pick the head up. This field I'm cutting now. Like I say, I'm quite pleased with it. I, I, it might even be the highest yield in the field of wheat I've got. I don't know, we'll know when we've got it all the weights back from the yard. Just a little bit annoyed though, we've got this pigeon damage. So where the spray has been turning in and out, the pigeons have got in, thinned out and eaten, like, you know, big areas. So like, all the way across the head of there, there's not really anything growing, which is just a shame. But at least they're only every 36 meters. Just coming up to another piece now, exactly the same, where the spray comes in and out. We've kind of got somewhere to land and then even either way. It's a bit of a worry with that new drill, with having such wide tram lines, whether it's going to give them somewhere to land. I'm actually debating not sewing any tram lines with it at all and putting them in just with the RTK on the new sprayer. And then they're only at the width that they need to be rather than actually closing two quarters off. Just jumped off the combine to show you this. You can see the wheat's going quite black now because of the weather. You look here, it's like a really white stripe through it, but you can't see very well. You see that stripe going along there, then it steps back a bit and then goes along. That's where the Bateman's backed up and the fungicides come out and sort of like double, double put it out for a split second and it's kept the wheat a lot cleaner. So I just thought I'd stop and show you that because it's quite interesting. So you can see here, this is where the chassis is of the sprayer. So that, so that boom lives along there. And then this one then is, is the back boom, it sticks out slightly and then it kicks back in and then goes off over there again. So this has had no fungicide and that's had it. Look how black it kind of gets when it, the weather gets to it. It's uh, very discoloring. It's come by looking cool. Yeah, you can sort of see it from this angle as well actually. Yeah, this field is one of them fields that you think there's something wrong with the soil, it just never seems to yield. Anyway, I'm now going down the field doing 10.11 tonnes to the hectare of winter wheat. I've never had a crop of ice off this field. I think we farmed it about 12 years now. We always just thought there was something wrong with it. There was something missing. Anyway, put it winter barley on it, cut it, put spring barley on it, never cut it, just flailed it in, sewn it with beans, and then now it's into winter wheat, and it's just totally transformed it. I don't know whether the soil biology's got going in it, uh, the drainage over the winter's got going because it's had roots in it over the summer and it's crap. I, I don't know totally changed this field and it's the same with the last the other field that I did it with as well that we now have the sunflower maize on we did the same thing with that it was always a bit of an iffy field and then now totally different don't want to get all evangelical about direct drilling and cover crops but it's definitely made a difference here that's probably about it for today now um charlotte's cart on the fence over there don't worry sam she's wiped her feet she's now ordering an indian for our tea that's going to get delivered so apparently we're out of the area for delivery because it's something i'm quietly going to deliver it's quite excited about that because i'm not up for ages and i'm starving anyway if you want to watch another video it's over there if you want to subscribe it's over here lots and lots and lots of new subscribers we might hit 25,000 soon someone's predicted it and that's their outro coming up now but when do you think we'll hit 25,000? answer in the below and i'll see you tomorrow thanks for watching